Hello, so welcome to this uh, tutorial of the new version of GLMO2. This is the version 1.11.0, and here it is a uh, change log uh, for this lat latest version of GLMO2. I have introduced a uh, lot of uh, new features plus a lot of uh, bug fixed. Uh, especially with this uh, version of GLMO2, you can uh, load the latest version of Ramses file format with particles families. And you have to know that this version is compatible with the new file format of Ramses uh, particles and the old, old file formats. So you don't have to, to care about uh, what uh, you want to load. Uh, GLMO2 automatically detects uh, the file format. As a new feature, we have the possibility from the graphic user interface and from the command line to uh, select a specific uh, sub-box of the Ramses data. So just have a look by uh, loading a simulation. So here we are going, we are going to load uh, Aquarius uh, simulation. So we have the Ramses simulation. We are going to just focus on the dark matter particles. And for Ramses simulation, we have a new box here that you can see under my mouse, which is XYZ min max selection, where you can uh, specify a, a value for XYZ minimum maximum to specific uh, uh, an area where you want to uh, select the particles. If you don't put anything, if you let zero to every uh, range, you will get the full box. So first, load the full box like, like this. So we have uh, our uh, dark matter particles, you know, here. And now if, uh, if you look at the simulation, you can see that here we have a very dense, dense area here because this is a zoom simulation and it would be nice to just load this area of particles. <clears throat> then I know that this area of particles are located in 0 0.6, 6, 6, and here it is. Now I just have loaded this part of the simulation, which can be very useful, especially when you have a big simulation with a lot of particles. And then if you just want to low a subset of your simulation, you can give a specific coordinates, either from the graphic user interface or directly from the command line interface where you can give as parameter x min, x max, y min, y max, and z min, z max. <coughs> You can, uh, there is, uh, okay, so let go back to the full box here. Zero, 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 okay. And now let me introduce you the uh, another new features, which is the uh, uh, I have done a lot of uh, improvement about the camera modules. So what is the camera modules? Okay, we click on the option uh, tools and then we go to the camera tab. And as you can see, there is a nice interface which will give you the possibility to uh, put a, a camera pass in order to make a very nice and smooth animation. So let's have a look. So I remove the grid here. I toggle on the control point. Okay, so let's, okay, from this interface here, I'm going to put some uh, uh, 3D point where I want that my camera will go through. So let's put the first one, minus one, minus one and, and zero, and click on commit. And here you can see that there is a control point which, uh, uh, which appear. I can toggle on, toggle off the control point here. 
Now let's put some another one, minus one, one, zero, and commit, click, and see there is another control point. Now let's put two more control points, one, dot, one, zero, and one, minus one, zero, and commit. And you can see there is one, two, three, four control, four control points. And now the magic is that when I click on here, on the pass checkbox here, there is a very smooth uh, line which goes through all the control point, which is actually a spline. And my camera, when I would press on start, would go through that line, and the camera will look at the center of the scene and will make a very nice animation. We can have an idea of what the camera will display by just clicking on, on the view mode here. And on this mode, I am in the camera mode. And on this mode, I am in user mode. So I remove the pass, I click on start, and you see my camera goes through that spline, turn around, uh, kind of around my object, and make a very, very nice and smooth animation. Which is good is that uh, while you are using this feature, you can uh, also use the Auto Screenshot tab. You can click on OnGL Events, and every uh, rendering, every frame which will be uh, displayed will be also saved on the disk. And then you will have a bunch of JPEG files, and you will be able to make a very nice and smooth movie like the one you are currently seeing on the screen. Okay, there are, you can, of course, this point, you can save this, uh, this camera pass by clicking on save here, by selecting a file name, by my camera, and click on save, and now these points are saved on the disk and you could, you would be able to load them later. We have in GLNIMO2 some predefined, predefined, sorry, um, camera paths. So we have a circle here, by default, which is very big. And of course, we can uh, rescale to something closer, sorry, something closer to the object. OK. You see, we have a very, very nice rotation around uh, our uh, Ramses simulation. And also, we have a line to circle. So what, what, what is it? It's like we have you know, a zoom plus a rotation. So let's have a look if you click on Start here. Here, we have a zoom on the simulation, then we have a rotation around the object. And as I told you, in the same time that you are doing, you are doing this animation, you can save all the frame uh, from this tab and for to make later a very nice movie. And I can go back to my first uh, line pass that I have saved by clicking on load and click my, my camera and I have my points. So this is uh, the features of GNMO2. Uh, I, ho I hope that you will enjoy it. Uh, do not forget to load the latest version on the website uh, and thanks for watching.